changes are coming to the TSP. And I think a lot of them will actually be for the good. There's one that I'm not excited about at all, and I hope it goes away. Welcome to the Military Money Manual Podcast, where every episode is all about achieving financial independence in the military faster than before. We believe personal finance shouldn't be boring or intimidating. Building wealth can be simple, and financial freedom is the ultimate financial goal. Now, here's your hosts, Spencer and Jamie. Hey everybody, Spencer here from MilitaryMoneyManual.com. Today's episode is all about the changes to the Thrift Savings Plan, or TSB, coming in June 2022. I founded the Military Money Manual in 2012, over 10 years ago, to share everything I learned about personal finance during my military service. Last year, I released my book. It's 119 pages of financial freedom goodness. The Military Money Manual, a practical guide to financial freedom. It's available right now on Amazon and my website, shop.militarymoneymanual.com. I'm here with my co-host, Jamie, to present today's episode on the changes coming to the TSP. Thanks, Spencer. Happy to be here as always. And uh, just a quick reminder for the listeners, if you have any questions or feedback, you can always send that to us on Instagram at Military Money Manual or email us at info at Military Money Manual dot com. As with all our episodes, this episode is for informational purposes only. We are not investment advisors. We can't guarantee you'll get rich in your TSP if you send us four easy payments in 1999. Right now, this is for informational purposes only. Nothing here is investment advice. So our most popular episode was episode number two, and that's where we discussed all the details of the TSP. And then in episode 37, we talked about the five TSP funds and broke those down even further. And then in episode number 38, we discussed some popular TSP investing strategies. So if you want to get the full TSP buffet, the full uh, five course tasting menu. Those are the episodes you want to go look at. Episode number two, number thirty seven, and number thirty eight, and then this one, which uh, I don't have a episode number for it yet because we're recording it. Yeah, so changes are coming to the TSP, and I think a lot of them will actually be for the good. There's one that I'm not excited about at all, and I hope it goes away. First couple changes, um, they're gonna create a user friendly and customizable homepage, which is, uh, I guess, user the, 19... in right, yeah. <laughs> the, the 1990s called and uh, the TSP is finally going to catch up to uh, web 2.0. Well, we're all moving on to web 3.0. Um, another nice feature, which I can't believe that this doesn't already exist, but if you have a civilian and a uniform services account, so let's say that you were active duty military and you got out, you got a GS job, you'll be able to see both your TSP accounts in one place which is um, pretty, um, I guess I should be that surprised, but it's uh, unfortunate that that it took until 2022 to yeah. uh, roll out roll out that feature. You'd think that'd be something pretty basic, but here we are. Uh, you'll also uh, have a TSP mobile app. So that's coming in June. And I'm pretty excited about that because right now it's like a um, five minute process every time I want to log in to see my TSP account. So that's, uh, that's going to be a great feature there. And uh, you'll also be able to use fingerprint or facial recognition. Obviously, I mean, all this banking app stuff that was around five years ago, the TSP is finally <laughs> catching up to. But Everywhere, it's good. We're all used to with all our other apps. Yeah, are finally exactly. Here. Yeah. yeah. I guess there's probably some retirees out there that are still getting their statements mailed to them. But um, and then uh, they're going to have a uh, like a little chat assistant that you can ask questions to a little chat bot on their website. Again, every other financial institution has had this for almost a decade now. Uh, but they're also going to introduce live chat. So you can actually um, talk with a human uh, over chat, which I think is a great feature. I know American express has an awesome chat feature on yeah. their website. And I'm usually able to solve most problems in under five minutes just by chatting with someone, which is a much more pleasant experience than having to call and make pleasantries with a customer service representative. Uh, they also have a secure mailbox. So you'll be able to send documents back and forth. And one thing that I am really excited about that is you're going to be able to digitally sign a lot of documents. Mm -hmm. So again, kind of catching up to what everybody else has been doing for the last couple of years, but it is nice to see that there is improvement and that the TSP is not completely stagnated. Now, Jamie, this next feature here, a mutual fund window. 
what is that? I that it, this is the first time I've ever heard of this phrase, mutual fund window. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the terminology that they chose here because it makes it seem like it's a window of peer, like a period of time where you have to sign up for a mutual fund, you a know, between June and July. Exactly. And if you miss your window of opportunity, then you you don't get to invest. But really what it is, is it maybe give it, think of it as giving you a glimpse into a window of extra options. So they're going to allow you starting in June of 2022 to invest in mutual funds in addition to the core funds, the five funds we talked about in episode 37 and the life cycle funds that are there, they're going to open up mutual funds. So they haven't really, I haven't seen yet at least, um, ha- Spencer, I don't know if you have, but a list of what mutual funds are going to be available. So, but I, I would picture like things like low cost passive index funds, like similar to VTSAX or a total stock market index. There may be, um, they haven't even said what company. I, I haven't seen anything confirming that it's going to be, you know, Vanguard funds or whatever the mutual funds are. Have you seen anything? I did see something about BlackRock was going to be involved and, you know, they're one of the, I think they do the iShares funds. So you'll probably see like SPY ETF, uh, but I, I don't think they're going to be doing ETFs. I think it's all just mutual funds. So, I mean, one thing that does, it does kind of open up the possibility for is ESG, that's environmental, social, and good governance funds, ESG funds. They've become really popular in the last 10 or 15 years or so. Mm-hmm. Uh, and some people are really, really into these funds and they, 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 you know, they like to own mutual funds that don't own any tobacco companies, don't own any defense contractor companies, which is kind of funny if you work for the government or the military. <laughs> but, you know, I, I understand I understand the the mentality behind it uh, and the thought process behind it. So, it, you know, it it is interesting that it that is opening up um, basically 5000 more options. Yeah, I think. All in all, though, it's a negative because the five core TSP funds, I mean, other than the I fund, which I'm always ragging on, are are really good funds and they're relatively cheap. And there's nothing that's going to say that any of these mutual funds are going to adhere to any kind of low cost expense ratio like the five core TSP funds. I mean, I'm already getting messages from people on Instagram saying, hey, have you heard about this mutual fund window? Are you going to invest in it? And the answer is absolutely not. Like yeah, I'll yeah. do my mutual, you know, I'm and people get the wrong impression. Like the, the, t- the five core TSP funds, I mean, they are mutual funds. I mean, we are mutually pooling our resources to then buy shares of companies. I mean, it's not mm-hmm. like, and the other common misconception I see as well is, oh, you never get dividends in your TSP fund. Well, no, you do. They're just automatically reinvested. So if you were to buy, let's say VOO, the Vanguard S&P 500 mutual fund, It's that's their ETF version. And I'm kind of using ETFs and mutual funds here interchangeably because really that's what they've become. I mean, they're almost completely yeah. interchangeable if they're investing in the same exact things and the expense ratios are just as cheap. So I guess the Spencer rant is all to say, like, I, I don't really see what the benefit here is. If you want to go and purchase a mutual fund, go to Schwab, go to Fidelity, go to Vanguard and purchase a mutual fund through a brokerage. I mean, heck, you can even do it through uh, USAA uses what victory capital or did they get bought out by, by Schwab? I can't, I can't remember now, but I, th- I think it's still victory capital. I think it's still victory capital. Yeah. So yeah, you can go and buy a mutual fund there and, but there's nothing that's, that's going to, that's saying you're, you're not going to have to pay a ton of expense ratios. There's nothing that's saying any of these funds are going to be any good. I mean, 5,000 mutual funds. I mean, how many, how many ways do you want to invest in the, you know, I'm a global market cap <laughs> index fund investor. I mean, there's only so many ways you can invest in the entire world uh, stock market. So I, I think they're a bit, it's a bit silly. So not only does introducing another 5,000 options to your TSP um, p- portfolio, it really complicates it, but it also adds fees. And this is one of the main reasons why both you and I are kind of not a big fan of the, of this particular change. We're very happy with the mobile app. I'm very happy with digital signatures, very happy with a better homepage, assuming it is actually uh, more user-friendly. But let's talk about some of these fees that are going to come up. So though, if, if you choose to opt into the mutual fund window, there'll be a $55 annual 
administrative fee. That helps ensure that the mutual fund window doesn't in, indirectly increase TSP administrative expenses for TSP participants who choose not to use the mutual fo- fund window. So you may think $55 a year, that's not that crazy, but wait, there's more. Um, kind of another another infomercial vibe the last couple episodes. So in addition to that $55 annual administrative fee, there's also a $95 annual maintenance fee. In addition to both of those annual fees, you're also going to pay per trade. This is going to be $28.75 per trade. That is both when you buy the fund and when you sell the fund. So if you think, oh, I'm going to diversify my TSP portfolio a little bit and I'm going to buy say five of these available funds, you're going to have two annual maintenance fees plus five times 2875 to buy the fund. And then you're going to have another fee when you when you sell it at the end. So um, th- the fees just don't make a lot of sense when you have better mutual fund opportunities in other brokerage firms like Vanguard, Schwab, Fidelity, uh, things like that. Now, Spencer, one of the limitations they have on not everyone that has a TSP is going to be eligible to buy into this mutual fund window um, of of five thousand extra mutual funds, right? What are the what are the limitations they have in place um, for who can participate in it? So uh, your initial investment must be at least ten thousand dollars, and you can't invest more than twenty five percent of your total account into the mutual fund window. So if you do the math there, you need at least $10,000 times four. So you're going to need at least $40,000 in your total balance uh, in order to make your first investment through the mutual fund window. So that's going to take out a lot of people, which is, <laughs> I personally think is a good thing because I don't think anybody should be really doing it. I mean, if you want to go, again, if you want to go buy mutual funds, go to any of the major brokerage and you can purchase them for free. Literally no trade fees, no annual fees, no administrative fees, nothing. You just, you can log into these, you know, um, what is it? Fidelity has, have their um, FZ Rocks, F-Z-R-O-X fund, which I think is their total US stock market, which is 0% expense ratio, no transaction fees to purchase it, um, no annual maintenance fees, nothing. It's complete. It's a completely free investment fund. And so it's insane to me that the TSP is charging all these fees. I, I understand why they are because they don't want the uh, TSP fees to increase uh, for those who elect not to participate in yeah. the mutual fund window, which I think I appreciate because I'm not going to participate. But at the uh, at the same time, I, I think it's it's absolutely ridiculous the number of fees that they're charging uh, in order to to use this mutual fund window. So, Jamie, I I'm not going to be using it. Do you have any intention? No, I don't. And like like you said, I'm going to keep my Vanguard brokerage and my Schwab brokerage going and leave that kind of separate. Um, I think it introduces a higher cost than people will realize. It introduces more complexity than people realize. I mean, you got to think with 5,000 available funds, some of them are probably not going to be great investments in general. And all those fees that we mentioned are in addition to the the um, fee structure of the fund itself. So if it's a 0.05 or um, five basis points, we talked about that a couple episodes ago, what that means. Um, So, I mean, it it can just add up. So if I can get it for the same, if I can get the same mutual fund for free with Vanguard, then why would I do it here? Um, Yeah. So I, to summarize, I guess I have no intentions um, of taking advantage of the mutual fund window. I'm going to keep with my CSNI strategy that I personally like right now. Um, Spencer, you mentioned a little bit earlier about some of the changes coming. I just want to step through them in a little bit more detail on some of them, uh, to kind of highlight again and, and see the benefits of some of the changes coming. So we're kind of bashing a little bit on the mutual fund window, but a lot of the customer service side, these are positive changes that we're going to see in June of 2022. You mentioned already the mobile app, which is going to be huge. The virtual assistant that's available 24 seven. That's kind of cool. Um, hopefully that's helpful. The chat function that you mentioned earlier is available during duty, uh, during business hours only. Uh, but I think, like you said, I think that'll be a good change. And then still having the ability to call in via phone if we want to. I'm really excited to check out the new My Account interface and see exa- exactly what they look, uh, what that looks like. Supposedly, your account summary will display your investments a little bit more cleanly. 
Uh, it will be very clear when you log in and then the navigation menu will be cleaned up a little bit like uh, a little bit better as well. I think the most positive change that we're both excited about is is the mobile app, though, like you said, being able to use my face to log into the TSP and not having to deal with getting a text or um, two factor authentication app. Uh, they do. It makes it, it. It's very clunky to log in and check your balance, and we're it's, we're not checking it every day. But having the ability to do it quickly from the app, I think, is is a huge, huge win. Um, the ability to save time and re- reduce paperwork is going to be helpful as well. They even talk about being able to submit documents, uh, scan checks, and I think you know for people that do a TSP loan or or at the um, stage where they're taking payments from their TSP, it'll clean up that process a lot as well. And uh, the last one here is kind of rolling over money from an IRA or other eligible plan into your TSP. They're making it kind of personalized service to bring money into your TSP just to help kind of smooth that process over. If you had a 401k from a previous job or something like that, that you wanted to consolidate into your TSP. The next couple uh, things we want to mention are just kind of things to be aware of or warnings, if you will, things to watch out for. The first thing that is important to note is that all TSP participants, whether you're using the mutual fund window or not, anyone with a TSP account is going to have to set up a new login uh, for my account. So there's some outages, some known periods of downtime for the website towards the end of May. So watch out for those, but expect into June of 2022, you'll have to log in and make a new account, even if you already have one. And then the next one to watch out for is is kind of an interesting um, note is that the historical documents, your statements will not transfer over to the new um, account, to the new website um, access. So if you want to have access to your historical statements, your options are to either save them now before the old legacy system goes down uh, towards the end of May, or you'll have to call into the thrift line and request to have them mailed to you. So it might be a good idea to go in there and save a couple of your statements, maybe at least your annual statements for the last couple of years. So you have that historical record available to you as they migrate to the new account. Yeah, that's a great uh, PSA, public service announcement there, Jamie. I, I think I'll probably go in and just download my end of year statements for like the last five years or something in PDF and upload it. I, I do the same thing with my LES where I download every PDF and just put it into Google Drive so I have a record and I know what's going on. Now, some of the terms are changing, right? So um, the TSP has some pretty confusing terminology sometimes when they're when you're talking about what's mm-hmm. happening with your money that's currently in the account versus what's happening with the money that's going into the account. So can you walk us through the terminology that's changing? Yeah, these are very important to understand. So the the first one we'll talk about is your investment election. This is previously called your contribution allocation. And so your investment uh, investment election will specify how you want to invest new money coming into your TSP account, such as from your direct contributions from your paycheck and things like that. Changing your investment election doesn't affect the money already in your account. So those are two separate things. And your investment election remains in effect until you submit a new one. And as a new feature, any change to your investment election will usually post to your account immediately and be effective the next business day. Currently, there's a a little bit more of a delay time. So they're speeding that up as part of the upgrades in June of 2022. Yeah. And then the other one is a reallocation. So this used to be called interfund transfer when you move money in your account among the different TSP funds and they've rebranded this reallocation, which makes sense because you're basically setting up your asset allocation. So it's a reallocation and you choose the percentage that you want invested in each TSP fund. And like uh, it is currently reallocations and fund transfers are limited. So each calendar month um, you get your first two reallocations or fund transfers to redistribute money in your account among any of the TSP funds. You basically can change your asset allocation two times. And then uh, after that, you can only move money into the G fund. So for all you TSP day traders out there, and I know that you're you're out there, uh, sorry, you're still going to be stuck uh, with your limitation of you can do two interfund transfers per month. And then after that, you can only move money into the the safety of the G fund. You know, last week we were talking about the TSP day trading subscription services that people try to sell you of like when to, when to sell in and out of the G fund and trying to time the market via your TSP. 
well, on Facebook this weekend, I got an ad for for one of those services. I'm like, man, come on, Zuckerberg, stop being so creepy. I don't want it. I'm not doing it. And and why? Like, I haven't searched for that. Like, I don't understand it. It's creepy. But <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, changes to the TSP in June of 2022. Um, hopefully, you know, maybe on the other side of at the at the end of the summer, we'll give a review of the app and a review of the changes maybe and see how customer friendly and user friendly the uh, new services are. Maybe try a, a chat or two, ask them some questions and see how the, the um, service goes. I think overall to kind of summarize our feelings about the changes coming in June of 2022, the customer service interface, positive changes, the mobile app is a huge benefit. The mutual fund window, uh, kind of, we would say we would do without that. We don't want the high fees. We would prefer to get our mutual funds elsewhere. Again, just to recap the fees, if you choose to opt into the mutual fund window, which will give you access to 5,000 mutual funds, but you're going to pay $55 annual administrative fee, $95 annual maintenance fee, in addition to $28.75 per trade. And then there's also the restrictions of your initial investment needs to be at least $10,000 and that amount, your initial investment uh, can be no more than 25% of your total account balance. So it also complicates your options in the TSP. I mean, thinking CSI or CNS or all C, some of those options that we talked through um, a couple episodes ago of different strategies, um, it really complicates it when you're talking through another 5,000 options. And so that's to kind of the summarize of why we don't think the mutual fund window is going to be a great option for really almost anyone, if not for most people with the TSP window. Yes. And like we said, uh, to learn more, you can go back to our most popular episode. That was number two, where we discussed all the details of the TSP. And then uh, episode 37, we talked about the five TSP funds that we do think you should invest in. That's the CSI, G, and F. And then episode number 38, we discussed some popular TSP investing strategies, whether that's a total market, total US stock market, um, total world stock market. Three fund. The, uh, the, the Boglehead um, lazy portfolio, three fund por- portfolio. So lots of options there. Um, and the big takeaway from that episode is just pick something that's reasonable and then stick with it. And mm-hmm. don't try to chase performance and don't tr- try to... Uh, Try not to have performance envy when uh, your friends post a 30% gain and you're down in uh, maybe a 15% gain, but maybe they took a little bit more risk. And so that's uh, to the uh, to the risk you go, the rewards. Uh, if you're enjoying the podcast, we'd appreciate a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And we appreciate all the reviews we've received so far. And make sure that uh, you subscribe so you don't miss future episodes and whatever app you use. If you have any questions or feedback, you can message us on Instagram, Military Money Manual, or email info at militarymoneymanual.com. And if you want to support what we're doing here in the podcast, you can check out my new book, The Military Money Manual. It's available right now on Amazon Prime with free shipping, Kindle ebook, instant delivery. That's very nice. Or Audible audiobook. And if you have an Amex Platinum card, you can actually sign up for Audible and get the fee reimbursed, I think up to $20 a month. 20, yeah. Yeah, $240 a year. So, And uh, if you want to learn more about the MX Platinum card, we have an episode about that as well. So you can go check out that episode was number 10, episode number 10 uh, for the MX Platinum card. Thanks again for listening to the Military Money Manual podcast, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of the Military Money Manual podcast. If you're enjoying the show, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. This helps others find the show, and we really appreciate it. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Hey, guys and gals. Spencer here again. Before I let you go, I want to let you know about two things. First, my 100% free course. It's called the Ultimate Military Credit Cards course, and you can sign up today at militarymoneymanual.com slash UMC3. I've been running this course for over four years now, and we just celebrated our 7,000th graduate. In this course, I walk you through an absolute beginner's guide to travel hacking and opening your first fee-waived credit cards in the military. Again, you can sign up today at militarymoneymanual.com slash UMC3. It's 100% free, no spam, and you can unsubscribe at any time. Second, 
My book, The Military Money Manual, A Practical Guide to Financial Freedom, is available on my website and Amazon today. Head over to shop.militarymoneymanual.com, or if you want the Amazon version, search Military Money Manual. This is the book I wish someone had handed me on my first day in the military. In this book, I cover the exact money tactics and investment strategies I used on my path to achieve financial independence while I served in the U.S. Air Force. The book is the best personal finance book specifically for you, whether you're an active duty, guard, reserve, a military spouse, enlisted, or officer. Any ROTC or academy cadet can benefit from the tactical and strategic advice I lay out in the book. But don't just take my word for it. Here's two reviews of the book. Ryan on goodreads.com wrote, the most comprehensive investing personal finance book specifically written for military members I've read so far. This book should be handed to every new LT at commissioning. Matt on Amazon said, this book is incredibly straightforward, easy to understand, practical, and useful. This book should be on the Commandant's reading list. Thanks, Matt. If you're interested in the book, head over to my website, shop.militarymoneymanual.com, and podcast listeners can use promo code PODCAST to get a special discount on the ebook, audiobook, and hardcover book. You can find the audiobook on Audible, the ebook on Amazon Kindle, and the hardcover book on Amazon, or again, head over to my website and use promo code PODCAST for a special discount. Thanks for listening.